revival an attempt to rethink of an ideal village over the past few decades india has emerged as a big economy globally and ever since an influence of a centralized system is dominantly prevailing urban centers of the nation have been progressing in a way that has had ill impacts on functioning of the rural context an unhealthy connection between the urban and rural parts of the nation has resulted in migration of the rural population on a large scale that adds to the factor of brain drain rural india was known for its self sufficient survival based on the abundance of resources post the economic liberalization the concept of wealth got redefined and has been confined just to the monetary factors through reframing policies and by incorporating traditional practices a resourceful management of these resources is intended that can act as a medium to the independent survival of individuals and the communities indian cities can be broadly categorized as tier 1 that is metropolitan cities tier 2 and tier 3 and the unclassified rural context metropolitan regions act as the economic hub and the progress rate is arguably faster which is determined in terms of the amount of consumption and hence consumerism comes into picture on the contrary the progress of village industries gets stagnant as it fails to find an immediate market the rural population opts to migrate eventually exposing themselves to a consumption centric environment eventually imbibing a sense of deprivation the dissertation aims to propose a conceptual policy based on the philosophies of decentralization and 5 mile radius as discussed by mohandas karamchand gandhi the concept finds is based on self reliance interdependencies of the 5 j's that is jal zameen jungle janwar and jan and a local approach towards planning the coherence of which helps a community evolve understanding the present day progress and exposure to the technology the nine basic parameters food and water security health care education shelter trade clothing connectivity energy and disaster management can be seen as the foundation of a resilient community trade being a nodal parameter initiates the idea of interdependency and offers an opportunity to the communities to stage themselves on a market platform the potential of a community is like a fuel to the engine of their trade usually a common profession or the ways by means of which the resources are extracted from the natural reserve determines the potential of a community external bodies can intervene as a catalyst to explore possibilities of a potential unknown which also adds to the resourceful management and resilience of the settlement a specific case of sindhi sirasgaon is identified located 25 kilometers west to the main city of aurangabad surviving on agriculture that grows jowari bajra corn and cotton as their primary produce studying the issues on site it can be concluded that the monotonous agricultural practice over the years also influenced by the industrial seed supply has resulted in an increase of nitrate content eventually leading to water contamination a csr funded water project helped the community to overcome the volumetric issues but failed to suffice the qualitative needs the swell area at the edge of the river body is planned to be converted in a channelized duckweed pond in order to control the nitrate content and ensure a cleaner flow of water adjacently agriculture has become a no profit no loss mode of income in the recent years a considerable produce of cotton results in collection of the cotton stalks in an excessive bulk which is burnt in open as a waste by product the same was bought by neighboring industries at minimal cost the practice being stopped few years ago the excess of cotton stalks is seen as an opportunity to establish a village industry to produce finished goods out of the raw material hence reversing and enhancing the flow of income svravriti a unit for handmade paper and boxwood production houses next to the panchayat office acting as a face of the governance the program primarily aims to promote local production and employment simultaneously functioning as a community intervention the node at the vertex of the site activates the area by possibilities of interaction physically as well as visually the street at the southern edge of the site houses the minority sect of the community and is observed to be a passive corridor 
the plan aims to complement the activeness at the node with a sense of open occupability, hence enhancing the aspect of penetrability. Southern facade of the building counters the passive corridor by activating the edge with veranda spaces and a public toilet also connecting to the interiors of the building. The production units are planned at the passive edge along with a proposed vehicular route ensuring a hindrance-free loading, unloading and ancillary functions. A desalination plant is proposed adjacent to the existing overhead tank in order to primarily suffice the water needs of the production unit. A hierarchic series of courtyards intangibly overlapping aims to enhance the possibility of interactions also activating the interiors of the site. The first level houses multiple terraces eventually connecting in an open plan promoting the skill set in the form of education and outreach. A thorough public activation at the ground level with an open plan at the building edge ensures a sense of security, offering the community habitation whenever in need. A vertical connect at various junctions adds to the factor of eyes on street to counter the passiveness of the street as well as enhancing the visual interactions within the interiors of the building. The multi-usability of the public edge creates possibilities of varied functions to be carried out, making the structure a celebratory intervention along with its primary program. At an individual level, a household can help the community by opting a lifestyle based on the paths of abundance. Usually, rural government schemes apply on a scale of poverty line, and hence it can differentiate the role of ownership. Two residential units are identified based on the economic and volumetric scale with a state of dilapidation as a common factor. The Vada, as the locals term it, is nearly a 300-year-old structure with its roof wearing off. The residents aim for a new build form and aspire to go multi-storey. The proposed intervention is a negotiation between the aspirations of the user and the core of the policy proposed, keeping the activity pattern similar and allotting respective spaces as per the present day scenario, the plan goes multi-storey. The existing mud walls and roofing system comprises the composition of a pandri mati observed to be wearing off in the present day. The extension of the existing house has an exposed GI deck sheet making the house a heat box negating the environmental qualities of the mud structure. The proposed intervention shifts the material palette from mud to bricks, the material being locally available. The central spaces subtract in order to create a courtyard responding to the hot and dry climate. A timber sloping roof is seen as a solution to go multi-storey simultaneously reflecting the direct heat waves as well as acting as a solution to the evident increase in the rainfall in the recent years. Reusing the elements from the existing build form can add to curation of spaces with minimal or no energy involved. The composition of a pandri mati can be utilized in the soak field that adds to the self-sustaining kitchen garden out of the discharged water. Channelizing the rainwater into tank and to the soak field or the reed bed helps the household to suffice to their own needs as well as contribute towards replenishing the water table. As a government model, a scheme can be proposed in order to identify units in a dilapidated state and follow the principle of reusability to refine the structures. Keeping the basic structure intact, certain activities are restructured in order to incorporate an inbuilt washroom facility as well as work out a small scale kitchen garden. The existing roof, being in a dilapidated state, is replaced by a sloping roof, also adding a multi storied space to occupy. The volumetric increase not just adds to the space but also helps all in the community to meet their aspirations to go multi-storey. The three interventions are planned in a phase-wise development wherein the duckweed pond and the production unit aims to enhance the quality of living of the community by incorporating self-sustaining and natural practices. Cotton stock being a raw material for the village industry is produced by all as a byproduct. The unit can adjacently function as an agro-credit society encouraging the community to contribute with incentives, hence boosting the local and natural trading system. The binding of the three programs is aimed to connect the concepts of community, individuals of the community and the aspirations they carry in the hope of attaining a stage we can term as an ideal village.